What's up dispatchers? Today's video is a survival mashup of tips, tricks, and hacks. I even threw in some skit comedy commercials just for fun. You do remember fun, don't you? Hey, if you don't like having fun, we have the technology. You simply fast forward to the stuff that's a little bit more serious. Why so serious? How to make a tarp into a tent. First, you gotta lay out your ground pad. Why? Because it's easier. Lay out your pad. Now just lay out your tarp in a square. Now on the back side of this tarp, there's five guy outs. Go one in and go into the ground. Then I'm gonna come over to the other side and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. One in and into the ground. Now you're gonna move back to the front. We're gonna count in one guy out, but we're gonna bring the outside to the location of where this one is. And you're gonna go ahead and stick it in the ground. And then do the same thing to the other side. Now here's where the magic happens, a stick and a shemog. So pull up the front and go in about 20 inches and just go ahead and stick your stick on the ground. Just like this. We put the shemog in so we didn't poke a hole through the top. Now go to one side and get the middle guy out and go ahead and stick it in the ground. Go to the other side, do the exact same thing. Tuck in the back, both sides. Now get your nice neat hank of paracord and a stick. Sticks are free. Remember toggles? Go ahead and pull one side out, come up here, go ahead and tie a taut line, then tie off the extra cordage. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. Say you don't like toggles, okay, we'll just girth itch it to the top and pull. Hook around the stake, finish off with another taut line. If you ask me, that's pretty pimp. Now you can put your gear inside. Plenty of room over here to put gear, supplies, wood, whatever. Nice. Did you know you can boil water in the bag? I'm gonna take the top of the bag and you're gonna wanna roll it over about one inch. Now you're gonna wanna get a stick and you're gonna wanna split it. Now take one of the sticks and slide it underneath the one side and take the other stick and put it underneath the other side. Now you're gonna wanna get another stick and you're gonna wanna split the end. And I went ahead and whipped some cordage just to make sure that the split would stop. Now we have a device that will hold our bag for us when we boil it over the fire. Get a stick and drive it into the ground. Now go ahead and split the stick in half. Now you've got something to help you hold the bag while you're attempting to boil the water. Now go ahead and slide your bag filled with water into the split and put your ranger band on the end. Now start your fire. Now you can adjust the bag closer to the fire. Do not allow the bag to come in direct contact with the flames. Make sure to keep it safely off to the side. And that's how you boil water in a bag. Here's a fire starting trick that might just save your life. Have you ever been so cold that your brain's telling your hands to do something, but they're not cooperating? The key to a good fire is locating the right materials and processing it, but you don't have time for that. Sometimes you just need a little extra punch. Here's what you're gonna do. First, you're gonna gather up your not so ideal resources. Now you're gonna pop the top off your seasoning. Now dump the seasoning on your plate. Now get to stroking. Pull your food down on the plate. Now that's fueling the fire. If I wanna eat, I'm gonna have to get it from out there. Thankfully, I've got my cash belt with my 23 piece adventure kit. One thing that I absolutely love about the cash belt is just how accessible everything is. And right here is 40 feet of Power Pro Spectra 50 pound test line. And right here are all my hooks and my sinkers. Now I'm gonna use the striker and cut the end of the tube off. Now I'm gonna put all the contents of the tube inside my hat just so I don't lose it. I'm also gonna save the tube. And now I'm going to very carefully cut this tube so that I can get to the spectra. Now I can push up on this a little bit and we can go ahead and pull out our fishing line. Now just so I can manage the cordage a little bit better, I tied a bowline on the end of this right here and now I'm gonna attach my wazoo carabiner to the end and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that here in a minute. So I'm gonna be using my canteen as a reel and it just helps if you have a little carabiner to attach it to the bottle itself. Now I can start wrapping the cordage around the bottle. Now that I have my cord management under control, I can go ahead and thread this through the hook. Now I'm gonna attach my sinker. 
And just to keep everything safe, I'm going to go ahead and use my cash cap and stuff everything inside of this pocket right here. Now I don't have to worry about losing the rest of my kit. I'm also going to put my striker back in its spot. And now we're good to go. And now I can put my belt back on. For bait, I went digging up in the duff. I found this old bottle, cut it off, and collected myself some worms. Jesus liked fish. I need some Jesus fish. If I wasn't so hungry, I'd actually be having a pretty good time. Felt a nibble. Why is it so much harder when you're hungry? Heck, I'd eat a carp right now. Brown. I, I don't care about bones, whatever. Just give me something. Jesus, take the reel. Take it from my hands. Survival, you can never give up. You just have to keep going. Let's try this one more time. What do you know? We got something on the line here. <sighs> <laughs> Well, it does work. I'll take anything I can get right this second. You gotta be careful what you pray for though, all right? Some of the scenes in Bushplicity are considered hilarious. Viewer discretion is advised. Located deep in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains lies one man with multiple personalities. Only one personality will emerge victorious on this epic battle for survival on Bushplicity. I reckon they call me camo just because it was such a cool name. I wear camo, I mix and match camo, I even make camo. I figure I can just spare any time I want. Did you get it? Camo is life. Now that everyone has vaccine, all I have to do is hit this button. Oh shit, that was close, comrade. My secret weapon is potatoes and water. After I drink it, I will find hole to hibernate like bear and win competition. The Predator is documentary, not movie. I ain't sitting in no chair. This ain't no competition, fool. Cause I'm Caucasian Cracker. Cause I'm awesome. Some men see trash. Like this discarded strap on. When I see a bowel movement aid. And I call this the bidet. Oh, come on, man. You watched me invent it. I don't even know what the internet is. Unaware he is the only contestant on the show. We sat JJ down for an interview about his role in the competition. You know, I'm kind of having like a deja vu experience, you know, like where you've been somewhere, but you haven't, like this. I'm JJ Morris with Fuel the Fires. I try to approach every competition the exact same. Really no one to compete against except myself. Key to survival is knowing your priorities. Shelter, water, fire, food. Being resourceful, that possum mentality. It's also about calculated risk and knowing your limits and pushing them as well. There's been so many people that have helped me get to where I am today and I owe it to them to get the best that I can with the abilities that I have. Be the best man win. Is this like a loan? I just don't see anybody else here yet. Are you one of those that refuses to sleep in a hammock because you think it's uncomfortable? Maybe you're just doing it wrong. Come on, I'm gonna help you out. First things first, I'm gonna find two trees that are about 15 feet apart. Now we're gonna make our first attachment to the first tree. Now here's the part that's gonna shock everyone. This first attachment point is gonna be about seven feet off the ground. And now we're gonna to go to the other side. Now you'll notice that I'm on uneven ground, so I'm gonna to have to raise this side a little bit. Just like this. Now if the wind would stop blowing, you would see that the hammock is actually level. Next thing to look at is the infinite ridge line right here. You'll notice that it is tight but it's not like guitar string tight. You don't have to have a fancy infinite ridge line like this one. You can actually take paracord and you can accomplish the same thing. Now, when I say ridge line, understand that is not what I'm gonna hang my tarp off of. You may be saying, what is an infinite ridge line and what can it do for me? See, once you get your hammock set perfectly, then you can go ahead and tie one of these across the end. The next time you hang it, it'll tell you exactly where to hang it. String is too tight, you've got the wrong angle. If the string is too loose, you've got the wrong angle. This string is just right, so I know that it's going to lay perfect. Now the next thing I like to do is I like to hang my hammock where I can actually use it as a seat when I'm at camp. This is great for just sitting around the fire, putting on your shoes or your clothes. Plus if for some reason you fell in the middle of the night, it's not that far. Now we gotta talk about laying flat. You notice that my head is up just a little bit. This little flap right here 
makes the perfect pillow. Now, if I were to lay like this, this would be very uncomfortable. This is not what you wanna do. It's like a banana, no bueno. What you wanna do is you wanna turn yourself just a little bit in the hammock. Now I'm laying almost perfectly flat with my head up in the air. You'll notice that I am also pointed uphill so that I don't get a headache in the middle of the night. Ah, that's what I'm talking about, perfectly flat. I am so comfortable. All right, now we gotta find us a big old birch tree and I think I found one right there. But I think this is where we're gonna source, filter, and purify our water. First, we gotta make a spile. First things first, we're gonna need some river cane. So I found some, we're gonna use the saw off the incredibly useless, useful multi-tool. That'll work. All right, so here's our river cane. We're just gonna go ahead and cut a length of tubing out of it. Now we're gonna cut this and make a downspout out of it. And on the other side, we're just gonna chamfer the ends a little bit just to clean it up. And now that we've got our spile made, we can set that off to the side. And the part that sucks is we're gonna have to drill or bore a hole out with the knife. Great. Oh, I can already see water. Now we just gotta make sure our hole's big enough for our spile. Now let's see if we can get our spile to go into the hole and fit nice and tight. Oh, look at that. That's what I'm talking about right there. Look at that, nice, pure, clean water. Look how fast it's coming out. It's pretty awesome. Now you might be saying like, oh my God, are you serious? Like it's that easy? Yeah. It's just that easy. And most people are gonna be like, explain? Well, it's pretty simple, really. After a long, hard winter, all the trees are getting ready to bloom and they've gotta pull as many nutrients out of the ground as they possibly can. Now, the vascular system of the tree is in between the outer bark and the inner wood. It's in the cambium layer. That's where all the water is being pulled out of the ground. And the thing that's so awesome about it is it's already filtered and purified and good to go. And just look at how clear the water is. Now, the next question is, how does it taste? It's like the angels delivered it to your doorstep themselves. That is so good. Now, when you're about done collecting, just go ahead and get one of the branches off the tree, make yourself a little stopper, be responsible, and close the hole up. All right, let's get that out of the way. Take our spile. There's our cork. I'm just gonna knock it in. Just like that. Boing. You might want to make a torch in the woods. Now, when it comes to torches, all you really need are three things. Something to carry it with, fuel, and a wick. Something to carry it with, a branch. That's gravy train rolling. As far as fuel goes, you can use fatwood or pine resin, birch oil. Maybe you've got something in your kit like a salve or an antibiotic ointment, hand sanitizer. There's also olive oil for cooking. Let me get a hell yeah for baking grease. The wick can be pretty simple. You could use poplar bark for making cordage or cedar. Maybe you've got some jute twine. You could pull strips off a bandana. You could even use your dirty socks. Let's just see what we can find in the woods. Come on, time is money, let's go. Look at this mother load of pine resin. That is so not typical, but I am going to load up. Holy gold. Oh my God, just look at this. Wow. And in just another 10 feet, I found a bunch of birch bark. Please and thank you. Things are looking up. And there's us a low lying branch off of a pine. We're gonna cut this as close to the tree as we can. Guess what that smells like. Okay, that's more than enough materials. Now we're gonna take our branch and we're gonna start batoning down a little bit, split this into four. You only need to go about, I don't know, six inches. Now let's do it again. Now we can shove some sticks down in there to spread it out on both sides, just like that. Now we're gonna take some of this birch bark and we're just gonna shove it in there. And in between layers, I'm gonna add some of the pine resin. I'm gonna go the other way with some of this birch bark, like this. Now all you gotta do is light it. There you go. Here's a quick tip on how to sharpen your machete in the field. Now to start off, I divide the machete into three separate sections. Why? Because usually only one or two sections need attention. Work smart, not hard. Step one is to slam your machete into a tree. 
Now you have a vise. Now when you bury it in the tree, just make sure to expose the section that you want to work. Step two, there's always time for lubrication. Don't clog up the stone, keep her wet. Now step three is get to work. Now a lot of people actually struggle with the angle at which to sharpen their blade. Well, here's a bonus tip. Color in the edge of the blade with a Sharpie. Now you can actually see the angle at which you're sharpening at. Now when you're done working one side, just flip it and do the other side. Ready for service. They say not all who wonder are lost. Maybe they're just willfully ignorant and won't stop and ask for directions. You should always know where you are, duh. So here's how to use a crappy analog watch from Walmart as a compass. Now for this demonstration, I'm just gonna place a tin stake in the ground. You could use a stick, no big deal. Now we know the direction of the sun exactly. Right now it is two o'clock. We're gonna go ahead and place the two o'clock in the eight o'clock position directly in line of the shadow. Now next, look at the 12 o'clock position. Now we're gonna take the dial face on this watch and we're gonna move it or bisect it in between two o'clock and 12 o'clock. You'll notice it's one o'clock on the bezel. Now I'm gonna take my compass and I'm gonna put it right here and I want you to notice which way is north and which way is south. Now this arrow right here, that is actually facing south. And if you're looking at the compass here, look, the direction of north is this arrow and this is directly south. You'll notice that the two are actually the same. Now, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I'm sorry, but you're just gonna be looking at a Northern line instead of the Southern line. And if it's daylight savings time, you're gonna use the one o'clock position instead of the 12 o'clock position, make your bisection or split the two and there's your southern line. Another thing that confuses people quite often, I went ahead and I stopped my old watch just to illustrate what I'm trying to say. If they say in the morning that you need to turn your watch clockwise, like in this case, it's eight o'clock in the morning, so we're gonna face the eight o'clock towards the sun. Use your bezel face to go ahead and place it at 10 o'clock, and there is your southern line. Now, let's say that it's four o'clock in the afternoon, we would turn the watch counterclockwise, point the hour hand at the sun, and we would bisect between 12 o'clock and four o'clock, and that would be your southern line. Now, from my experience as an instructor, a lot of people don't even realize that a watch is based on a sundial. And then their faces are like, oh yeah, right, 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 right. Is it over for the cast and crew of Bushplicity? I don't know, this could be the end. He might not make it. Well, you've got trouble, James. One minute we're filming and next thing you know, bam, he just bounces off the ground. I got two by 12. Gonna need a medical evac now. Medics are in route. He came to, he was, he was talking crazy. Patient is hallucinating possible head trauma. I don't know if he'll be back. Come on, buddy. I know how these survival shows work. You know, I want a piece of pizza. Can I let us just starve? Look, I know people in the industry know how to get a piece of that gluten pizza. <laughs> I'm just glad I was there and that I could help. I think this is a wake up call for the producers. You don't just need a medic on standby, you need them on location. People just don't realize how difficult it is out here. Yeah, I'm actually pretty good. I'm surprisingly full. And by the way, there's a couple pieces of pizza in that box over there. They go to waste now, I'll get pissed. First rule of survival is don't get monkey butt. If you can't take care of your own ass, you can't save someone else's. No, it's starting to rain, guys. I'm gonna take this jug I found by the creek and go collect some more water. Here's a hack, literally, to keep you from being lost. So you went down the rabbit hole on TikTok again. Just one more conspiracy theory and you might just join a cult. If you decide to stroll through nature is what's needed. Do a little grounding, as the millennials say. In your haste to get where you're going, you grab your bag and you get there and everything looks different, but it's all looking the same. You know what I'm saying? Man, I know I've been here. It just looks different, bruh. And of course, everything's in the bag but what you need. Man, how you just gonna leave the GPS on the charger like that again? Maybe you just suck at navigation. Bro, do these things even work without 5G? Alexa, volume 10. Let's hope at least you have a knife. Here's a trick I learned at the tree farm back in the day. Cat eyes. And if you cut them into resinous pine trees like this, the sap is gonna flow to protect the tree. They literally glow at night like a cat eye when you shine a light. The light actually reflects off of the sap. Just do it every 10 to 20 meters and you'll be good. Just make sure the cat eyes are in the direction that you're coming back. Oh yeah. Ah. Yes. And that is definitely a hack worth knowing. Now the comment section, that's where all the magic happens. It's where I get ideas to make videos like this. So if you're honey smack digging the content, then let me know. If you want to see more content like this, then do me a favor. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And until next time, keep fueling those fires.